Welcome to the Next Level Human Podcast. As a human, you have a job to do. In fact, you have four jobs. To earn and manage money, to attain and maintain health and fitness, to build and sustain personal relationships, to find meaning and make a difference. None of these jobs are taught in school. And that is what this podcast is designed to do, to educate us all on living our most fulfilled lives through the mastery of these four jobs. I'm your host, Dr. Jade Tita, and I believe we are here living this life for three reasons and three reasons only. To learn, to teach, and to love. In this podcast, I will be learning, teaching, and loving right along with you. Grateful to have your company. Here's to our next level. Level. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Very excited for today's show. I'm here with Stephanie Wang, who is the creator of, I have to say, my favorite product that I have seen probably in the last decade, Stephanie. And uh, I want to kind of cue this up uh, to introduce Stephanie to all of you. Uh, obviously, this is the Next Level Human podcast, and Stephanie is one of these people who has, through her own sort of um, journey, uh, decided to create something for the world that uh, is incredibly powerful. Uh, it's funny because I first got in touch with her because she had has this product, which you're going to learn about here in a minute. And I was like, oh, I wanted to just ask her some questions as a fellow entrepreneur because I was thinking of developing this particular product. And she was incredibly gracious and sent me some of her product. And then I took the product and I was like, I'm not going to create my own product. This is the best thing I've ever, like, how could I do better than this? And so now uh, we're sort of here. So Stephanie, this this product is Kana. It is something that um, a lot of people do not know about. Uh, you have been, you know, now sought after as an expert in this because you created this for the world. And of course, you're not the first kind of product. I would just say you're the best kind of product out there, in my opinion. And what I want to know is uh, help us understand what what kind of got you started on this journey. What is Kana? How did you get on this journey? And a little bit about your next level human journey, because we were talking before we got on uh, you and me and, and I was talking about the idea that there's nothing more powerful in my mind than someone who goes through something, learns something, struggles through something, and then decides, you know what, the world needs this, and I'm going to be the one to bring it to them. And we were also talking about how people don't realize that entrepreneurs and being an entrepreneur is incredibly, incredibly difficult. You put a lot of skin on the line, a lot of love in it, and you don't know how the world is going to receive it. And so, first of all, my gratitude. Thanks for being on the show. And Help us understand your journey with this incredible product. Well, first of all, Dr. J, thank you for having me on the show. It's a, it's a great honor. And thank you for also acknowledging the path of an entrepreneur. Um, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, I actually consider it a spiritual path because you actually are confronted every day with your fears mm-hmm. and you have to grow. You either grow in the process or you just kind of just say, no, this is not for me. And it's, and that's okay. It's not, you know, entrepreneurship is not for, for everyone. Um, having said that, um, what you said was absolutely true in terms of going through a journey, especially with creating this kind of product, which is um, something that certainly from, from, uh, from my heart, it's been um, my greatest intention to bring something to the world that can really help people. Mm -hmm. And how did this all start? Well, the seed of Kind Pathogenics, which is my company, began about 10 years ago. I had my um, very first plant ceremony, and that was not with psychedelics at all. It was actually with Kana. And at the time, you know, I had gone through, I mean, my whole life, there had been quite a few traumatic events and you know, which I don't need to get into because like you said, I think all of us um, in one way or another are all on a journey and um, going through difficulty and challenges is something that is part of life and how we meet those challenges and how we heal and grow from them is what brings, you know, the great meaning, right? 
And so during that time, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I went into the ceremony and it was done in a very sort of South American shamanic way. Um, but it was with Kana, this plant that until then I not heard of. And Kana is a succulent from South Africa that has been revered as a sacred plant by the native Khoikhoi and San tribes of Southern Africa and has been you know, used medicinally and societally and spiritually by um, the Khoikhoi and the San for, for millennia. And what I experienced during the ceremony was a connection to the most profound feeling of love that I had ever felt in my life. And that journey maybe lasted five hours, six hours. But, you know, the the feeling of it, and it's very hard in this, you have your own experience with Kana in ceremony. It is it really expansive. You feel this complete interconnectedness of all things. And you also come to this inner knowing that what coheres this universe is love. What connects all of us, what we are each of us made of is actually love. And I know that may sound a little bit like corny, but it is totally true. And this is um, a wordless knowing and understanding. And when you can grasp that in your core, you really come to a feeling of belonging and deep meaning as to what living this life means. And you start to not just be able to see things differently and see your own patterns and kind of go, oh, wait a minute, I was so obsessed with this one thing would actually it's not that important or oh my god I can totally forgive myself and somebody else for something that happened years ago or just now so there's this tremendous sort of accelerated um, moment during the ceremony which I had a ser- accelerating process I should say and that stayed with me for a long time and I kind of kept working with Kana personally for 10 years and about four years ago I was like you know this is so incredible. I need to bring this to more people in an accessible way, not just in ceremony, because not everybody can do that. Mm. You know, and how can we actually integrate this sense of belonging, of joy, of happiness, of understanding, and kind of heart-centered wisdom into our daily lives? And that's when I really got deep into the science of it. And it was equally fascinating, right? Because I actually started on the more consciousness side of things and then went into a personal development way, and then went into the scientific aspects. And um, Kana is a natural serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So it prevents the reabsorption of serotonin in the brain and in the body. And what's interesting is that it's also a serotonin releasing agent where actually majority, you could say, of its action is more as an SRA, as a serotonin releasing agent. And that way, it actually really, you know, allows the the prevalence of more serotonin in your body. And it acts very differently than, let's say, a chemical SSRI. Plus, there's, it's non-addictive, it's, there's no tolerance buildup. And that's very unusual. Mm -hmm. What's also interesting is that it activates various neuroreceptors and not just one type, which a lot of other substances and plants generally target sort of one set or one type of neuroreceptor. Um, Kana actually activates receptors for cholecystokinin, for melatonin, for GABA, and for opioids, just to name a few. So that means it helps actually control hedonic cravings um, and hedonic hunger and thirst. It also helps improve sleep quality, especially if you take it regularly. It then, um, with the GABA and the opioids, it's basically calming your brain activity and also giving you this sort of feel-good factor. So on those levels, it's it's fascinating. And on top of that, it inhibits a, an enzyme called PDE4, which allows our bodies to actually resource more energy so that you can sustain that your stamina. And um, also the inhibition of PDE4 as well improves cognition and helps make Kana very neuroprotective. And so you have this amazing plant that is neuroprotective. It is an empathogen because it's heart opening and opens yourself to more emotional, um, well, excuse me, provides you more 
emotional openness or has you, has you access more emotional openness. It um, also helps lower social anxiety. It helps calm you. It helps reduce stress and anxiety. So there's all of these amazing aspects, including improving cognition and stamina. So it's really a fascinating, uh, fascinating plant that the more that we have been working with it to not just develop our products, but just to study it has always been revealing more and more to us in the process. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I have to say, I have been, um, incredibly impressed on everything that it does. And just to add a few things, just, just in case, uh, the practitioners among you want to know the mechanism. So M M A O A is the gene that it's, uh, sort of impacting that is, uh, making it sort of a serotonin or releasing agent, you know, also, also all the monoamines. So, you know, that's dopamine, that's serotonin, um, GABA as, as well as you mentioned. So it's like sort of the serotonin dopamine GABA sort of a thing. It also lowers, um, glucocorticoid production. So for people who are stressed, I see it as, uh, one of the most fascinating adaptogens that I've yes. ever studied. And a lot of people may not, you know, they might go, well, that's interesting because we typically think of things like ashwagandha or rhodiola or things like that as adaptogens, which certainly can do that. But to me, this has way more scope in terms of mechanism of action of any adaptogen uh, that I've studied. And this part that you allude to, Stephanie, which I think is a part of the thing that I think is so amazing about what you've done here is, that, you know, we today feel, uh, you know, and I think everyone would agree to this, there's a there's a, a social angst across the world, especially in the West, that is making people feel uh, alone, like they're not accepted, like they don't belong, like they need to battle. Uh, there's a this constant uh, thinking in dualities and binaries. I'm right, you're wrong. You know, I'm left, you're right. You know, uh, all these extremes that I feel like something like Khan, and it sounds like this was part of your idea, Something like Kana begins to help us see the spiritual truth, which is we are indeed all connected. And one of the things I'll say about this, and then I want to get your thoughts on it, is that one of the reasons I immediately reacted to your products so um, favorably is that I've tried Kana products before and, and they're nice. You know, they, they're certainly nice, but uh, sometimes you're like, I don't know that I feel anything. So maybe it's healthy. Maybe it's not. There's something immediately about this product, even the way you formulated it in the way it sort of tingles in your mouth that you feel an uplift almost immediately. And I was telling uh, Stephanie, and I'll share this with all of you, but the other thing that was really uh, profound for me, and one of the reasons I got into Kana anyway, is what you mentioned about hedonic eating, because obviously a lot of what I do is in the weight loss world. And I was like, the mechanisms of action here, you know, cortisol mechanisms of action, uh, you know, the anti-inflammatory, you know, effects, the dopamine serotonin effects, this has to have a positive benefit. I hadn't felt that with any of the other kind of products until I uh, had yours. And I also say one more thing here that's really interesting. I'm a Italian. I love my wine. I can overdo it a little bit. And one of the things I've been doing, which is really interesting, is when I'm going out socially, which I do a lot, and I'm trying to reduce my alcohol intake, I will take uh, the kind of you know, uh, mm -hmm. your product. And it's amazing because it's better than uh, alcohol in terms of opening me up and just helping me connect to people, but I'm not actually doing the alcohol. So I would agree. It's an incredible, uh, it's an incredible product in all of its mechanisms of action. And so here's the thing that I, I want to know, how are you um, how did you initially see this? Because you know, as entrepreneurs, you know how this is, Stephanie. You you put a product out, and there's certain things that you're like, yeah, that's exactly what I had hoped, and other things that are very surprising. And you know, uh, in terms of what people are saying, so what are what are what's the feedback you're getting? What is the things that you're most excited about with this product? Um, what are what are your sort of uh, thoughts now that it's out into the world? And and also, you know, did you see what, you know, you didn't, this was done just before the pandemic. And so mm -hmm. this was a product that was needed, I think, and is needed post pandemic. So I'm just wondering all your thoughts on sort of looking back now, uh, you know, yeah. what, what has surprised you? What are the things that you're most excited about? Wow. Um, that is a lot to address and I'll mm -hmm. do it one by one. First yeah. of all, um, I do want to say that the intentionality behind the product is, and you can feel it when you're actually ingesting it. Um, the intentionality is absolutely there. And honestly, the biggest reason I wanted to bring this to the market and create this company is to 
help people reconnect to their heart centeredness. This is really our, I would say, our core intelligence. We have a ton of intelligence in our mind and our brain, but without this heart mind connection, you know, we go astray. We mm. get too much in our heads. And you can already see in the world what that's what that's done for us, right? Um, because if we lack empathy and compassion and the the sort of the and forgetting how we are interconnected, we start to do things that harm each other without even knowing, right? Because we're not conscious enough. And so <clears throat> I would say the biggest reason for bringing this product is to, you know, hopefully inspire and help people reconnect to that in themselves. Half of the time when you ask someone, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? They're like, oh, I think I'm okay. Like it's, they always go to the head, right? Mm -hmm. Or they go to some automatic answer. But if you really ask someone how they feel, it's often very hard for people to even connect to how they feel because so many people are disassociated from their own feelings. That is the first step of healing. It's like, wait a minute, let's just stop trying to get something outside to try to fix us. What is going on in here? Because we as human beings have so much in, inherent intelligence in our bodies. And I think that's one huge aspect that I, I really, um, I think a lot of people can resonate with, but I really want to emphasize. And Kana and Ka um, are here to help with that, right? And um, in terms of why, you know, because, and thank you so much for your very kind words of what you're saying about our products and our offering. Um, we so appreciate that. And there's a reason why you actually feel it more because of the way that we formulate it. It's a patented, patented formulation, first of all. And we did not use any heat to degrade um, any of the plant ingredients. And the ingredients no, don't just include kana. They also include snow lotus, akmela, um, excuse me, snow lotus, akmela, uh, lavender, and, and mint. And, um, and I'm not, excuse me, let me, let me say this again, that all of these actually work together, you know, synergistically and because we didn't use any heat in the production process, nor did we use any elastomers or sugars, um, none of the bioactivity is, is damaged, right? So when you're, what you're taking into your body is, you know, and we're talking about the kind of chews right now. Mm -hmm. When you take the chews into your body, you're actually ingesting something that's alive, right? And, and so you feel it too. Very, you, you feel, feel it. it. It's very, very different. And we also specifically didn't want to use any sugars for obvious reasons, but also to make it as pH neutral as we could. And um, so it's diabetic friendly, it's keto friendly, and we didn't even use any elastomers. The craziest thing is we did not use any preservatives. I, I really, um, if you try and find something out there that doesn't even have citric acid or any kind of preservative, it's I mean, impossible. I don't think you'll find that. I mean, I challenge anyone to find that mm -hmm. because I would like to know that research. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, we took many years to come to to create this um, with, you know, and actually have it taste good on top of all of this. And that was really, really, really difficult. But that's the kind of clean offering we wanted to give to the world. Yeah, it's, you know, it speaks to Stephanie, kind of this thing, like as a naturopathic physician uh, among my colleagues, there's always been this argument of like, what are we doing to the plants? when we process the plants to such a degree. And, you know, so my reaction was, there's no way I could do better than this. It comes from a lot of seeing that. I was like, how did they do this in this way? It's al it almost feels as if you're literally going to the plant, you know, and picking it and then chewing it the way the Koi Koi and San, you know, uh, did. It feels like genuine plant matter. It also is incredibly, um, you know, it's funny that it does it. It does have a sweet taste. You know, so it blew me away when I looked immediately. It was like, oh, but there's no sugar in this. And so you're just getting all these natural, you know, sort of compounds in there. And I want to I want to say something in regards to what you talked about, you know, with this heart centered feeling, because a lot of my work now as the psychology part of what I do, what a lot of people don't know is the heart has its own nervous system and it's in constant communication uh, with the brain. This is all research. You know, the Heart Math Institute is doing a lot of this research. A lot of people are not necessarily aware of this. And one of the things that I would say, and, and I'm interested in your take on this, is that there's not many things that we can do in our society that get us out of our logical mind and get us into our feeling sense. And part of the reason we don't want to look at our feeling sense 
is there's a lot of wounds there. And we're afraid that we're going to pick at those scabs and that they're going to start bleeding again. And so that we then avoid them. One of the things that I have seen with uh, Kana, and we'll talk a little bit about the difference between Kana and psychedelics, because I think people will get that confused. It's not a psychedelic, but it has a similar sort of way of allowing you distance between your struggles. And uh, you alluded to this earlier, where it's like these things have happened to me and or I've done things I'm not proud of. And we can, as humans, push those things down. We'll blame, complain, whimper, whine, distract, deny. Sometimes at our worst, we'll attack as a result of that. And what I've found with these compounds, and especially Kana, which is really interesting, is it allows you distance between these wounds and these betrayals and these needs for apologies and all this stuff that no one talks about and gives you some distance to see your patterns and to look at it in the context of your individual journey. In my mind, we're here for three reasons, to learn, to teach, and to love. And we don't have a whole lot of compounds that allow us to actually get into the feeling sense without being overwhelmed by the feeling sense. And it, to me, kind of seems to be a guardian of that in a sense. It's like a plant that allows you to say, okay, Stephanie, okay, Jade, we're going to go and look now at these wounds. You're going to feel connected. You're going to feel loved. You're going to feel this sort of euphoric sense. And though, we're going to allow you to look at these difficult things. And in a sense, from that perspective, it frees you. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering how, is, is this the initial uh, call that you had when you had, when you did that ceremony? And then I want to talk a little bit about you know, ceremonial setting versus what you've done, which is daily use. But talk to me a little bit about that ceremonial. Is is that what happened? And what did you what did you confront? And then you said you did a bunch of work with this herb in the last 10 years before you brought it. And 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 perhaps it was helping you, uh, you know, sort of uh, take those struggles and completely integrate them. Um, absolutely. Kana is so interesting because it's psychoactive, but not psychedelic. Mm -hmm. And it's also great for integration. But before I even get to that, in terms of ceremony and how it gives you that space, it really, what it's doing is it's actually helping you or allowing you um, to hold space for yourself, right? We talk about holding space. What does it mean? Usually it's someone else holding space for you. But no, this is actually a beautiful sacred plant that is a teaching plant that is, a, that is helping you to hold space for yourself in love. So... You're looking at your patterns, but it's in a very loving, gentle way. And that's how Kana works. It's not sort of hit you over the head, let me beat you up kind of way. What it's doing is it's kind of saying, it's okay. It's okay to let go. It's okay to feel the feels. And often, because you were asking earlier about some of the greatest stories that I've, testimonials that I've been hearing from people who've been, who've been trying the product is, you know, oftentimes what will happen is um, it's not all just like, ooh, let's you know, joy and happiness, sometimes the floodgates open and all of what was stuck gets moved. You know, we had, um, actually it was a guy who, who let us know that he, he was like, oh my God, I love your product. This is the best thing ever. And then I was expecting him to tell me something like, it made me feel so good. And he said, oh my God, I cried all night. I couldn't stop crying. It was the best thing ever. I so needed that. I so needed to release these emotions and connect to what it was that I was repressing and it was incredibly healing for him. So that was one. Mm -hmm. Another beautiful story is, and this is more um, um, on sort of, yeah, somebody who had a lot of issues with anxiety and insomnia. So this was a, a woman who was going through menopause. And because of that, she couldn't sleep. Uh, she had, you know, even more anxiety than normal. And she was taking a pharmaceutical just to help with that. And when she discovered Ka, she just said, you know what, I'm going to try this. She, she stopped taking the pharmaceutical and it was so much better, you know, than the Xanax. I'll just say it. Right. And um, for, I'm not saying you know, everyone is a little different. I just want to be very clear. Um, if you're on any, on any sort of prescription medications, absolutely talk to your physician before you, you switch to something else, because especially with SSRIs, and so diazepines as well, but especially with SSRIs um, for both, you just have to be really careful how you um, come off them. So that's just uh, something to take note of. One of the other stories, you know, we had was um, someone who had a lot of chronic pain and she wasn't even thinking, oh, I'm going to take, she was like, okay, I'm taking COG because I love to work out and it's helping me work out a lot better. Like I'm stronger. I can go a little longer, 
But the unexpected result, because she actually took this continually for like a month, uh, was that her chronic pain just went away. And this was, she wasn't intentionally doing that, but this because of, again, the, the you know, Kana has analgesic and an anti-inflammatory and also immunomodulatory um, properties, that that also went away from her. Another person um, said, you know, she was having a lot of conflict with a friend and they could not sort of come together. Um, but they were you know, like, no, but they, but she really wanted to because this friendship meant a lot. And so she suggested that they share some Kana together, Kana Chews. Um, and when they did, they were actually able to really speak from the heart and listen to each other and allow whatever needed to, to happen, happen. And it basically helped them process and resolve this conflict. And we got a beautiful testimonial from this as well. So this was something that, you know, um, I maybe did not anticipate, um, but it's, it's kind of the, the, the type of reaction and response we've been getting. The yeah. And, and one thing I'll say for those of you listening to Stephanie and I's conversation mm -hmm. right now, one of the things that I think uh, all of us have been very interested, I'm sure you have too, Stephanie, we've all been interested in the psychedelics. One of the things yeah. that Stephanie was al alluding to, though, is these psychedelics can, can, they really can be pretty harsh. They really can kind of knock you over the head. And I do think people are right to be a little bit cautious and a little bit afraid of, you know, some of these these things. Kana is not that at all, which makes it so. And, and plus, it's legal. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, one of the things that's really beautiful about it is it's not something that's going to hit you over the head that way. It's incredibly gentle in what it does. And a lot of people might say, well, it sounds like it does everything. It's starting to sound like snake oil, kind right. of that snake oil salesman kind of thing. But if you look at the metabolism, the metabolism, you know, really the seat of the metabolism is in the brain. And anytime you can do anything to reduce stress mm -hmm. and also, you know, amplify brain chemistry and reduce inflammation and all those things, you're going to see global effects. And that's partly what uh, you are seeing here. But I but I have a theory and I want to see uh, how, how you kind of look at this. So, you know, we talk about consciousness a, a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's two two schools of thought. And this is just going to be an interesting, maybe philosophical discussion, because I've listened to several of your uh, your interviews and you're incredibly smart and insightful and wise. And so I, I thought maybe you'd have a thought on this, but, you know, so there's materialism, which for people who don't know, materialism is this idea that, you know, the brain creates consciousness. It's just, you know, once all these, the nervous system bundles are so complex, it eventually poof, you know, consciousness happens. And maybe that's the way it works, but there's an alternative hypothesis, which is idealism, which is just to say that everything is consciousness, including us. We're just an extension of this, universal mind in a sense and our brains are really more like a filter for consciousness not the mm -hmm. creator of consciousness and if we if and i tend to be more of an idealist in my philosophy and i tend to think of some of these compounds herbs in in particular and things like kana as almost opening up that filter it's almost like let's say uh you know the old radios where you had to turn the dial so let's say stephanie's like 107 fm and jade is 102 you know, FM, and maybe some of you listeners are like, you know, 94 AM, right? So we have our little frequency that we're picking up consciousness. And then all of a sudden you take something like Kana mm -hmm. and your consciousness just expands, opens up in a way that now you have access to a range of uh, consciousness and your perception, mm -hmm. you know, begins to be altered. You begin to see things differently. And I do think that that shift what we don't know is that, and, and you alluded to this, Stephanie, that shift, you know, our um, our bodies are electric and energetic in a sense, too. We, we, you know, so the idea that emotions only come from the head, you know, they are associated with, you know, these energy centers in our body. And so also the body's uh, perception and ability to open up and, you know, be a greater filter for consciousness comes in, which allows for healing, which then explains some of the things that people will do, like this guy who you know, had this uh, this cry and this release that men sent him on sort of a healing path. I've seen that kind of thing over and over and over in my patients over the years. And I never could quite describe it, but I do think it has to do with this, this sort of filter for consciousness. So I'm wondering just what your thoughts are on that at all. I mean, it's a very Taoist sort of philosophy in a sense. I would say Taoism is a non dualistic, you know, sort of idealist philosophy. But I'm wondering just what your thoughts are on, are on that and how you see something like Kana sort of fit in, sort of a philosophical question for you. 
Well, thank you for asking that question because it's a great question, first of all. And it dovetails nicely into psychedelics, not psychedelic. How mm-hmm. does this compound work? Kana is, is a, how should I say, a non-psychedelic entheogen. So it does shift your consciousness. And what it's doing, I think, on a very basic level, right? Because it's actually, when we're stressed and sort of in flight or fight, right? Our serotonin levels, it, it, that depletes our serotonin levels, period. Which then, you know, affects our sleep, affects how we operate, right? On a day-to-day level. And if there is more serotonin in your brain, there is it's literally opening up that perception, right? Because if you're fight or flight, you're just focused. You're just like, oh my God, this tiger is going to eat me or my boss is going to fire me. And it's you're just focused at like a pinpoint. You cannot see anything else because all you care about is survival in that moment. What kind of does because of the mechanisms and how it works in, in the body, it actually opens that up. So you start to see more, you have, start to work more creatively. Mm-hmm. You start to problem solve more easily. You start to see alternatives to things that you did not see before. So in that sense, as a filter, you know, you're absolutely right. Like normally we're, we're you're going about our day, but when we are sort of assisted by these plant allies and, you know, Khan is certainly one of them, we're able to open that up. We're able to perceive not just wider, but more deeply. We're able to perceive, how does she say, multidimensionally and especially emotionally. And we start to kind of have more navigational ability um, in our interior landscape, which, of course, as above, so below, whatever we end up doing in our behavioral patterns comes from subconscious beliefs and subconscious ways of um, that we've been programmed, right? So when we start to kind of access through um, feelings in particular, because uh, we're talking about this um, empathogen, which is Kana, it's a very interesting pathway, right? And what's also from a ceremonial level or from a shamanic level, Kana is considered heart medicine. Whereas let's say psilocybin or ayahuasca, right? Which has some popular plant-based psychedelics are considered spirit medicine. So it brings you into consciousness through spirit out of body. Whereas Kana helps you stay in your body and you're kind of coming to consciousness and up leveling through the heart in your body. And that's very, very different. And that's why, to your point about integration, that's why Kana is so great for integration on a daily basis whatever is happening in your life and it helps you kind of process and integrate beautifully and it's also great for integration post ceremony let's say you've just had a mind-blowing journey and you're just like whoa you know you're coming out of it not only does kana help replenish the serotonin that you just may have you know gotten a little bit drained of um, it also helps you integrate everything that just has come up for you right because there's a lot that usually comes up during these plant ceremonies during these journeys. So over time, it really helps you and assists you um, to to do that. And again, what's great about Kana is that it is not habit forming and it's safe to take on a daily basis. And that is something that is so anathema. Right? People don't think about, oh, what do you mean? I can dose myself every day and it's okay. And it's in fact helpful and neuroprotective. And that's why Kana is so special because of exactly this which most people don't know about. I'm sorry to break into the show, but I wanted to take a second to cover one of our sponsors and tell you all about Paleo Valley at paleovalley.com. These are the grass-fed sticks that I tell you all so much about that all of my friends know I have on hand constantly. They are in my car. They are at my house. I keep them at my sister's home and my parents' house. I have these things everywhere because they are the simplest, most convenient whole foods protein supplement you can get. Almost like carrying around pure protein, low carb protein in your pocket. They also, these Paleo Valley beef sticks are the only, the only 100% grass fed and grass finished beef sticks on the market. They use organic spices. They are naturally fermented Instead of using nitrates and nitrites that can be a problem in some of these cured meats, and they simply taste fantastic. Check out the original or the jalapeno. 
Those are my favorites. Please make sure you go over to paleovalley.com and visit. When checking out, use the code NEXT level for a 15% discount. Remember, our sponsors keep the show going by you giving them your patronage and spending your money on these high quality products. You actually do a few things. One, you're helping to support the podcast. And two, you are helping your health. And three, you are making sure that good quality companies like Paleo Valley can be out there doing their business changing the world, making the earth better. One of the things you may not know about this is that grass-fed organic and grass-finished beef is doing something that is so utterly important for our environment, actually helping to repopulate the topsoil. A lot of people don't know this, but our topsoil is being extremely depleted. And raising animals, especially cattle, the correct way helps to get that topsoil back. This is one of the reasons why I love Paleo Valley, not to mention it tastes fantastic, but they're one of these companies, like my other sponsors, Cured Nutrition and Organifi, that are doing the right things by the environment. I really appreciate everything they do, and I hope you will check them out. Thanks so much. Paleovalley.com. Use the code next level. And now back to the show. Yeah, that's so, so well said. And just just for the listener, if you're a little bit confused by the term empathogen, it's it's just basically a compound that makes you feel warmth and benevolence uh, for others and also allows you to accept and feel that you are connected and belong. So you accept yourself and you, you're connected and you belong, which is a, a thing that we, I think, uh, desperately need uh, in our culture. And, you know, to me, uh, one of the things that I like about this is you talked about the grounding effect of it. Like normally, uh, if you're going to take a psychedelic, Right. Mm -hmm. Like you said, uh, I love your distinction of spirit medicine versus heart medicine. You know, you're out there, you know, you're not really in your body, whereas Mm -hmm. Kana really brings you. It's not one of these things that, you know, feels like you're out there at all. You feel very grounded, uh, but also incredibly conscious, a lateral thinker, ability to expand your awareness, be in tune with your feelings in a way that is a uh, very different and you know, of course in my work the metabolism work part of the reason i even got into this space that we're talking about now is that psychology i, I realized early on you can't divorce psychology from physiology they are they are absolutely the same and so we're entering into the physiology through our psychology with this particular herb you can do the same thing with like you know exercise for example as a way to enter into the psychology through our physiology but I love the way that you talked about using this, you know, just in, in the integration practices. Um, and I also love the way you talked about this in, in terms of, um, you know, friends, you know, and, and connection. It really is one of those things, which brings me to something that you and I talked about this. I hate these kind of comparisons. I know you get this all the time, but a lot of people, you know, Stephanie's going to roll her eyes at me. But, uh, you know, so a lot of people compare this to MDMA and that feeling which to me, I've done MDMA in therapy. They're very different in feeling. MDA, MDMA does sort of have a little bit more of an out there type of feel in ceremony. Kana does not, to me, feel exactly like that. But I guess some of the mechanisms of action make people compare this, which I don't think it's a good comparison. But, but I think you know that everyone's going to ask you about that again and again because of some of the mechanisms of action. But you know, there, are some, there are some potential concerns with MDMA in terms of uh, p- perhaps uh, neurotoxicity and stuff that does not exist uh, with Kana. But th- that's, uh, that's something that I know comes up and that, that St- you, Stephanie, and me will probably answer this question every single time you talk about Kana. For anyone who knows a little bit, they're going to bring that up. You know, they're definitely going to bring that up. Absolutely. I mean, that's why it's an FAQ on our site. Um, mm-hmm. There are, okay, I will say that that sort of heart expanded feeling is similar to MDMA. But MDMA, first of all, is synthetic. Kana is not. It's organic. It's a plant. It's been used by for thousands of years by the indigenous of Southern Afri- Africa. Um, and also, like you mentioned, you it's really not advisable to take MDMA every day or consistently because it will damage your nervous system. And you it's, feel the come down on that where there is no come down on Kana. Yeah. Kana is like one of these things where no. there's not, there's not only is there not a come down, it almost feels like there's just a buildup. You know, it's like it, it almost feels like it's reinforcing you in some really powerful way. It, it is. You know, we like to say, first of all, Kana unplugs you from the matrix. <laughs> That's how That's I like a great to way to it. say it. Yeah. 
and that it resets your brain. So, you know, we actually, we, we've done this in the past where we, we do a little 30 day journey with, you know, we, we were like, Hey, who wants to join us for a 30 day journey? And then we bring in integration coaches and stuff like that. Um, because this is another plant that isn't, it, it's like, it's a gift that keeps on giving and yes, you can do it ceremonially, but if you kind of microdose it every day, you will see the powerful effects. It is subtle, but it is very powerful mm -hmm. in the sense of um, there are certain things I can tell you personally, right? Having done that 30 day and then maybe stop a few weeks and then done it again consistently. I take it very regularly is that I've noticed that certain patterns in me that were not positive, like let's say like I was super impatient and I kind of lose my temper easily. That's the entrepreneur in you still. <laughs> All right. I just, I just get so grouchy, right? Yeah. And I've noticed that, you know, even when I'm not taking it now, I have been able to maintain a certain level of calm. Mm. And that's what's beautiful about calm. It's real medicine. It's actually really healing you. And it's actually helping you. Um, and so that's very, very different, certainly from MDMA, MDMA or anything else out there. And again, chemically, so, so different. One will really damage your nervous system. The other is very neuroprotective. Plus there's other risks. When, and, and again, I don't want to take away from MDMA assisted therapy because I know that works for a lot of people, but it's just, you just need to be conscious of what the downside is, right? What the negative effects are. And so, you know, people, I don't know, hyperthermia, um, some other, some other um, negative effects as well from, from MDMA. Yeah. And, and people who have mood disorders, you got to be very careful because it yeah. can be incredibly depleting to the neurotransmitter mm -hmm. system. You got people can really crash after MDMA. Let, let's talk a little bit about uh, how to take this now. So you mentioned there's several, and I know um, you have a couple different products, you know, so you have a, a tincture basically that you take, you know, droppers. Um, I really, I, I've been using the chews almost every day. I'm a little bit bigger. So for me, I started with one. I actually do two now pretty much uh, in the morning. And, um, you know, so you could tell me if I'm doing this right. Me and me and Stephanie have gone back and forth on email a few times where she's been educating me a little bit, because what's interesting about your background, very few people who bring herbs have real have the experience of, you know, the indigenous sort of experience that you've had. Like, you know, you you kind of understand how this is used uh, indigenously. You have people on your staff who are, you know, uh, high end scientists. So, you know, you're kind of into the art and science of this, where a lot of people are either they're the art side, you know, and they don't really get the science or they're the science side and they don't understand how it's been traditionally used. What I like about you, Stephanie, is you're kind of both. You understand the art, the traditional uses, and you, you're deep into the science of it. So let's talk a little bit about how this would be used. Let's talk first about um, if someone did want to use something like this in a ceremonial sense, what does that even mean? And how, how does that work? Because it's very different than, uh, you know, sort of the daily use, which we'll talk about after. Sure. Um, I think before I get into that, it's important to share some of the contraindications. Yeah. Um, because if, if you're already taking SSRIs, MAOIs, SNRIs, or any kind of CNS depressant, this is not advisable for you to do. 100%. Don't take that, unless, you know, we have to get into that as a separate case. But generally, it's a no. And so let's say ceremonial dose. Is that what you're asking? Well, yeah. And just, and just how that would work, you know, is it, does it, is, you know, yes, the, the dosage and, you know, sort of how that would even work. Is this something you would say, sure, you could, hey, Jade, you can go and do this by yourself one day and set aside some time, put on some healing music, put on an eye mask, go deep into the, the experience. Or is this something that's like, you know, you really should have a, you know, a shaman type person there. And, and yes. And, and what doses would you use? You and I kind of talked about this by yeah. email, but a lot of people who are into uh, it's, I don't even know that it's uh, you may even say it's really not the most appropriate way to talk about Kana, but I know a lot of people who are into the psychedelics, mm -hmm. you know, uh, use Kana, or, you know, in, in addition to, or separate from, and certainly I like the idea part of what I've been interested in, and I haven't done this yet, but I've shared this with Stephanie on email. I, I really want to, I've done all the psychedelics in ceremonial setting. I'm, I absolutely love Kana. I just haven't done a very high dose yet in a, in a more traditional, let me go deep and see what this herb can teach me kind of thing. And even if that's appropriate, you know, and, and you being the expert, I'm just curious how you, how you see it and do the, do the Koi and Koi, Koi and San even do this in their traditional cultures? 
Thank you for asking that. And um, by the way, you're just making my day because just everything you said, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to bring the science and the wisdom traditions, right, of the indigenous and also the spiritual tr uh, tradition as well. So there's all of that that's wrapped in here. And um, it's important because that's mm -hmm. actually how, if you want to get the most out of uh, whatever you're doing for your health, and sort of whole health in your life, that's kind of how you have to approach it. You have to look at all of these aspects, right? So on a ceremonial level, I can tell you that the way that I initially did the ceremony with that where I, when I met Kana was done in a very South American shamanic way. So it was interesting because it was actually a South African plant in a in more the South American, traditional yeah. with a Peruvian shaman. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay, um, but, you know, he's indigenous and he was bringing this because he, he has this whole kind of pharmacopoeia of, of all different plants from all over the world. And and um, so my experience sitting with Kana in ceremony was like very much how a lot of other ceremonies are conducted. So we first share an intention, which, by the way, is super important because mm -hmm. what, when you share an intention or you have an intention before you ingest something, it basically is making you more mindful, right? Because otherwise you're just shoving stuff in your mouth. And you have to respect that this is a sacred plant and you don't have to, but it is definitely recommended, um, highly recommended that you do that because this is a living being, right? And when you come into, when you set an intention, what you're doing is also coming into relationship with something. So there's a big difference between mind, mindless consumption versus mindful relationship and a big difference between extraction and you know being transactionary a transactional in something versus being mindful with a relationship that you're building so it's the same approach to plant medicine right and so with kana you set an intention and usually it's in a group so each of us shares that intention and we share it with a group because as the journey starts we will start to see how each of our intentions starts to weave together. And in our interactions, we will actually discover some amazing insight usually, or you'll find answers from somebody else asking you or just telling you something that is totally not related to maybe something that you were talking about, but then kind of um, inspires you or gives you much more deep, uh, much deeper insight into whatever that you were looking for an answer for. Right. So, we weave this container. Um, we're not allowed to leave, right? We're just being, um, we're, we're observing and respecting the space and each other. And we go in, right? So we kind of first usually go deep into ourselves, have that space for ourselves, listen, there's music playing, there's very calming music playing. And um, yeah, and we kind of drop into to that feeling. It usually starts happening, that drop in starts, oh my God, it could start as quickly as 15 minutes or as long, it depends on the form that you're taking it in. Um, and then in about half an hour, you really, 45 minutes, you're really in it. And in this process, you, at least in the setting that I was in, you could sit by yourself and nobody will bother you if you don't, if you say, hey, don't bother me. Or you can kind of come into um, a group setting where you can chat and, and, and do whatever. So um, that happens and let's say five or six hours later, you can feel the medicine kind of waning. Um, people usually then grab some food. And then the next morning is when the facilitator or the shaman will do an integration session. And that mm -hmm. is super, super important because that is really allowing each person to share what their experience was. And when each of us hears the other person's experience, that also infuses into our experience and again, it, it's not complete without this process of sharing, right? Yeah. Because that is communicating a lot of what's happened. You, you're speaking what has happened to you. You're getting guidance. You're, you're sharing with each other. You're building connection. And at the end of the day, plant medicine, honestly, I believe the greatest purpose of plant medicine is to build community. Because it starts to take away all of these artificial masks that we wear on a day-to-day -day basis. It brings us back to our humanity. And I think ceremony is, people don't necessarily talk about this, but ceremony is actually a great way to kind of dismantle a lot of these 
um, a lot of this infrastructure that we have in place to be and to exist in our world and allows us finally the freedom just to be ourselves, right? And that's hugely healing. And to be able to share our feelings, that is not something that, I mean, it sounds simple, but it's not something that most people could can even do, let alone with strangers, right? Yeah. So, so that is ceremony in itself. The indigenous and how they did it was a little bit different. Um, I actually, what I do know is that they would take uh, Kana and ceremonial doses and go into a trance and they would dance and they would essentially divine, um, sort of talk to God, talk to their, their, um, um, their divine being and also talk to their ancestors. So it was a way to commune again with the greater divine existence of life and also your antecedents, right? Mm. And so this is still about connection though. There's a theme that runs around this. And this is the beautiful thing that you also were talking about that is what Kana brings is this realization of interconnection and just connection in general, just allows yeah. us to connect more readily with each other, which is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I love that so much. Like it dissolves the illusion yeah. of separateness in a sense, right. it seems like, Absolutely. which to me, all, all spiritual teachings, right? They essentially come back down to the idea that we are all one, we are all connected. And, and maybe the matrix is the idea that we think we are separate, you know, and, and you mm -hmm. know, sort quote what I would call source consciousness. It seems like these plant medicines are connecting you back to this. And, and one thing I'll just say for the listener, because I'm sure some people who are would might be like, so is this getting you high? You know, for me, the feeling uh, of like the little heavier doses, it more is, is I wouldn't call it being high. I would call it being expanded and grounded at the same time. It's mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like uh, what most people would think, uh, you know, and, and of course, I haven't done the very high dose ceremonial piece. But uh, what about sort of the daily piece then? Because then that would be considered you know, what I'm currently doing uh, with Kana and, and finding, you know, one of the major findings that I'm finding is that uh, eating that I typically do at night, my Italian, you know, desire to eat everything in sight from five o'clock to 11 p.m. <laughs> is, is essentially dissipated. But, you know, that's, uh, and, and I do about, you know, one or two, sometimes I do it in the morning, sometimes I do it, you know, right around three o'clock, you know, and, and it's uh, in lieu of just relaxing for sort of the night. And, how, so how do you do sort of the daily dose and what do you recommend? And of course, I'm a big guy. So, you know, I'm 225 pounds. So, you know, I'm, obviously I feel like maybe I need a little bit bigger dose. Maybe not because it, but it does depend. Sometimes I've noticed, Stephanie, if I've eaten something versus I've, I've not and or just context. Like sometimes it just really hits in a way that's like, oh, that's interesting that mm -hmm. today it was a little bit more powerful. It always seems to give me something a little Different, different, but predictable right? enough. Yeah, but predictable enough not to yeah. cause any anxiety around. It just seems like pushes you in just the right way. Uh, that's absolutely true. You know, you are different. Each of us are different every day. So if we're engaging with something else that's alive, it's always going to be a little bit different, mm -hmm. right? Well, this is the difference between plants and pharmaceuticals, right? Pharmaceuticals yeah. are designed to give you the okay. It's always the same thing. Not to poo-poo pharmaceuticals because we certainly need them under certain settings. There's a place for all of it. Um, but on a daily basis, this is what I do. I take uh, one Kana Chew. We have two products. We have the Kana Chews and the Kana Tincture. I'll take the Kana Chew in the morning, first thing before breakfast, before anything. It just helps set, set the tone for me. So I'm a super busy, stressed out entrepreneur. <laughs> and you know, when I do that in the morning, the chews for me last all day. So I don't get into this overwhelmed feeling, which I used to do a lot because I just see all of this stuff coming at me. And now I just kind of go, oh, okay, well, okay, I can do this first and then this and then this and then, okay, it's all good. Um, let's say it's six, seven hours now and I'm about to go out and I'm kind of tired and I'm going to go out with someone, I'm meeting my friends. Uh, I'll bring the tincture with me actually. Um, because the tincture being a sublingual liquid, it absorbs more quickly and it will kind of hit you quicker. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring it out. Um, I'll dose my friends if they're into it. Uh, you can also put it into water or a drink and that will still be effective. It won't, that won't affect the efficacy. Um, and it's lovely, like you said, to take instead of 
alcohol. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in South Africa, in Afrikaans, it's called one dry drink. Mm -hmm. So they actually take Kana as one dry drink. So it's like, if you don't want to take alcohol, take this. And it's actually used in um, South Africa to treat alcoholism and to treat yeah. addiction. So yeah, I knew that part. It's really neat. So neat. Like all of yeah. these different, different aspects. And so that's like the tincture for me is the re-up, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I have also like, I mean, I, I encourage people to try because everybody's different, right? Like you said. And for some, they are diehard tincture people. They're like, don't give me anything. I just want the tincture and that's all I want. And that's all I'm going to do all day. I'm like, great, right? But there are ways to work with them both, like I, like I said. Um, in terms of dosage, it really depends. And it doesn't depend on body mass, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, I know someone who's maybe a little bit um, less in weight than you are, mm. Dr. Jade. But for him, at this point, it's like a quarter is enough. Because yeah, he's been interesting. regularly, yeah. right? Yeah. It's so interesting. And so um, it really depends. And for some people, they do need more. Mm. And I will say, if someone has been, let's say, taking amphetamine salts like Adderall or something for in the past, they don't even have to be taking it now. Their initial dose will need to be higher. Yeah. That's just how it is, right? Um, and also what's super interesting is that serotonin actually first helps lower inflammation in the body. So sometimes if we have a lot of inflammation, that, you know, the kana might first be doing that, which is great for you anyway, um, before you start to feel that uplift. So every person is different. And, you know, I will also say that what are some of the negative effects that some people have been report that that do have, right? Um, nausea sometimes, mm -hmm. but usually that's only initially for a little bit of time. Sometimes people have um, an upset stomach. Sometimes people get headaches. It, But majority of people don't have these issues. But again, it all depends on your own genetics as well. There's mm -hmm. no one size fits all. And one thing I'll say about the digestive stuff, just as a naturopathic doctor, because we do a lot of gut restoration stuff, you'll oftentimes see as the gut heals that uh, the, the digestive system heals, which kind of has a lot of implications for that in terms of its mechanisms of action. You will see sometimes on the way to gut restoration programs, you will see some nausea. You will see a little bit of digestive upset when you um, you know, do gut restoration programs. So it wouldn't be surprising to me that some people might see that it's part of the healing process for the digestive system. So it, it, it wouldn't be surprising for, for me to see something that so it seems to be so good for the gut, uh, to be able to do that. So, okay. So let's just, uh, let's wrap up in terms of final, final thoughts here. So we've kind of covered the biochemistry of this. I really love Stephanie that we covered. And I know that, um, as I've listened to your interviews, you know, you and I definitely vibe in our philosophical worldviews. And I'm really glad that we uh, covered that because I agree with you. This, this is the Next Level Human podcast, your Next Level Human journey, mine. It's part of the reason that we are, you know, sort of in a really uh, powerful place in terms of meeting each other. That's what happens, you know, in terms of when you're chasing your purpose and building things, you come, you know, together with like-minded people. So we talked a lot about this idea that Kana may be one of these, you know, adaptogenic, uh, you know, sort of psychoactive, you know, healing herbs for our time and that helping all of us, you know, kind of rise to our next level human selves, which really is going to require that we look at our struggles uh, a different way. And I really love that you and I covered that because I do. There's a part of me that thinks that might be the most important uh, element of this. We can talk about the biochemistry and all the all those amazing things, but this is doing something uh, I think much more powerful than that. And I'm glad that we got a chance um, to talk about that. And, and then and then and then just the different ways uh, to take it. You know, sort of higher dose in a more ceremonial way, and then the way that you recommend taking it, which is sort of this daily dose. Uh, you know. Um, which which I am now doing as well. But is there anything else that you want to say, may want to make sure that we cover that you want to leave the listener with just to understand about uh, what you've created here and, and this amazing herb that's part of it? Yeah. And, and thank you for saying everything that you're saying, Dr. Jay. That's, you know, what you're saying is so, so true. Um, let me address a couple of things. First of all, that in terms of its use, like in terms of the product and how to use it, some other ways, you know, I just showed, I just shared my way, mm -hmm. but 
really it's for any moment. Like if you're feeling like, oh my God, you know, you're waning at about three, four o'clock in the afternoon and you want to like grab a snack, don't grab that snack. Take a kind of chew. It'll give you that energy and yes, that lift. Yes, that's good. It right? Is. Um, for intimacy, if you want to connect with your partner more deeply, have that open hearted connection. It makes everything else so much more beautiful. That's another use case, right? Before you work out, before you do body work, like yoga, anything that requires you to kind of center like meditation, it's great because it calms the monkey mind and it brings you into your body and goes, boom, right? It's great if you are wanting a creative boost because of all the reasons we explained earlier. And, um, you know, there is this, this, how shall I say this? You will get messages, I swear. You will get ideas coming out of nowhere. Um, for a lot of people that happens. And yeah, and just before you're doing a big presentation, you really need to focus or you need to like focus on a project that you need to finish. This is super helpful cognitively for memory, for problem solving, for um, you know, they've actually done studies um, about, about this and brain, te- you know, people uh, taking Kana and doing better for um, brain teasers and math, you know, as an example. So those are, those are some of the ways. Uh, I'm just sharing that because I want to really let people know that this is something that they can easily incorporate into their daily lives. Yeah, lots of use cases. So many. And, but the very important point I think it's great to end with is what you just talked about, which is about being this next level human, right? This is the podcast. And I truly believe that Kana is coming to the world in a much, it's been around forever, of course, but it's coming now really into the mainstream for a reason. Post pandemic, there's more, I mean, we've always been sort of having the separation crisis, right? But post post pandemic, it's even worse during the pandemic, certainly. But this feeling of isolation and loneliness, it's traumatized us, right? And continues to. Um, We're seeing the extremism happen in the world, all these controversies. It's making us In some ways, I think it's designed that way to make us feel more fragmented. And, you know, this is a beautiful plan coming in to be our allies in making us remember who we are, right? And the powerful, you know, empowered beings that we truly are. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely think it's coming into the world, you know, during this time for a very specific reason, for exactly that reason. And... You know, I would say especially because we're in this age of AI, algorithms, everything is digitized, everything is social media. It's an artificial connection a lot of times. When we become disassociated from what makes us human in the first place, that's when diseases, these, these feelings of dislocation, separation, loneliness, that's how all of that happens. And if we can really reconnect to who we are, that is so much more powerful. And I think it's so important because, you know, again, with the technological trends and where we're heading as a society, this is even more important to remind ourselves of. Yeah, hundred percent. I I couldn't agree more. And I'm, I'm, I just want to thank you so much for your work. And by the way, everybody, so kaempathogenics.com is the website oh my com. actually it's easier to remember oh, oh my car m-y-k-a.com okay oh my car.com i love that <laughs> <laughs> and um and you know just so all of you know a part of what i'm doing i told you i wanted to create a kind of product stephanie did it better than i ever could imagine doing it so i really am going to be pushing this product and uh you know making this something that i am Uh, really putting my heart and soul into as well to uh, help Stephanie get the word out and use this particular product. And so you'll be hearing a lot more about this product from me. When you go to the website, you use DR Jade um, in the coupon code, right, Stephanie? That will get you. D-R-J-A-D-E. Yeah, D-R-J-A-D-E is my code when you go to ohmycod.com. And uh, you can get... uh, you know, uh, a taste of what this is going to do for you. I'm incredibly excited for all of you to uh, get this medicine. I think it's going to be incredibly powerful. You'll be hearing a lot more about it from me. And, you know, you're a, you know, so uh, you have a, a IG uh, yes. as well, right? So yeah. that's what Instagram is. Our Instagram handle is ka.empathogenics. 
So cod.empathogenics, at cod.empathogenics on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, uh, and you'll see they're doing some education there. And you're going to hear a lot about this from me as well. Stephanie, first of all, uh, thank you so much for your time. And second of all, uh, thank you so much gratitude for someone like you who has done the work. I know how hard this is to bring something like this to the world. And thank you for struggling for all of us. So appreciate you. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful podcast for you, beautiful human being, and for doing all the amazing work that you do. And, you know, it was such an honor to, to be on your show. And just so the listeners know the code D R J A D E Dr. Jade, um, you will also receive that's the discount code. So it's 10% yeah. off. So yeah, you get 10% off with that code D R J A D E. Thank you so much. And Stephanie, just hang on the line just so I can make sure this all uploads and we'll see you all at the next show. Appreciate you. You've been listening to the Next Level Human podcast with Dr. Jade Tita. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe and consider leaving a review. You make the biggest difference when you pass on your lessons and inspire others. That's why reviews like this are so powerful. Your words may be the only ones that resonate for someone else. Please remember the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only. Always consult your personal physician or therapist before making any lifestyle changes. And finally, thank you for who you are in the world and the difference you make.